past, present, or future, one kind of fighter has stood the test of time, the swordsman. And today's combatants are two of the most skilled warriors to ever wield a blade. Roronoa Zoro, the feared swordsman of the Straw Hat Pirates. And Urza Scarlet, the battle mage of the Fairy Tale Guild. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. As a child, Roronoa Zoro dreamed of becoming the greatest swordsman in the world. But he didn't just enroll at a dojo, he showed up, challenged everyone, and then just sort of stuck around. Zoro's dojo training sharpened his natural talent with a sword, but there was one person he could never quite manage to beat, his sensei's daughter, Kuina. They dueled a lot, and Kuina won every single matchup, all 2001 of them. Damn, you think you would have got at least one in? Despite the constant defeat, Kuina and Zoro were very close friends. Together, they promised that someday one of them would become the world's best swordsman. And then she fell down some stairs and died, which just seems like an unacceptable way for a master swordsman to bite the dust. Does thin out the competition for world's best swordsman, though. True, I mean, that's how I became the world's best shotgun woodcarver. After Kuina's death, Zoro inherited her sword and used it to hone his skills even further, eventually leaving the dojo in search of the current title holder of world's greatest swordsman, Dracul Mihawk. But he immediately got himself lost. With nothing better to do, he became a bounty hunter and wandered around the ocean until he ran into a weird, stretchy pirate kid. You mean Monkey D. Luffy, who brought Zoro onto his crew of Straw Hat Pirates. Actually worked out pretty well, since Luffy was already looking to hire him anyway. Turns out, Zoro has quite a reputation. At this point, he was already a master swordsman, and after finding and training under Mihawk, his swordsmanship became legendary. He created his own fighting style, Santoryu, also called Three Sword Style, because he uses three swords, one in each hand, and one in his freaking mouth. That doesn't seem very safe. Oh, shut up, Wiz. Badasses don't care about safety. Regardless, with the Three Sword Style, Zoro can perform several unique attacks, including the Onigiri, where he strikes with all three blades at once. Or the Tetsumaki, where he makes a tornado dragon. By swinging his swords a certain way, he can fire compressed air projectiles toward an opponent, like with his deadliest technique, the 1080-pound cannon. And last but not least, he knows the Kutoryu Nine Sword Style. Wait, did he just grow four more arms and two more heads? How the hell did he do that? It's just an illusion, but it still somehow has physical presence. He's like a human slap chop with a total of nine swords. That's one way to put it. In addition to his skills with a blade, Zoro is able to use Haki, a mysterious power that every living being possesses, but only a select few have learned how to use. Hockey, much like Neapolitan ice cream, comes in three flavors, and Zoro only has access to chocolate and vanilla. Chocolate? I... what? I, I don't even... well, one of those flavors is observation hockey. That's vanilla! Of course. Which, in some ways, is similar to Spider-Man's Spidey Sense. Zoro can sense the location of other people, even if they're invisible or far away, and can also predict most opponents' attacks. Then chocolate, everyone's favorite hockey flavor, is armament hockey. This lets him form an invisible armor around himself as protection, or harden his swords to make his strikes cut through almost anything. With both hockey, Zoro has been a real asset to the Straw Hat Pirates. They've traveled the world and had a lot of weird adventures. Like that time Zoro fought a literal living mountain man named Pika and sliced him clean in half. A strike so powerful it didn't just cut through Pika, it sent his top half flying upward. Considering Pika's enormous size and approximate mass, this strike had to have been more powerful than the first ever deployed hydrogen bomb, the 11 megaton Castle Romeo. Also, Zoro's pretty damn fast. One time he moved so quickly he seemed invisible to a room full of highly trained assassins. And when the odds are against him, he'll keep pushing himself, even past the point of bleeding out. Thus, he's powered through some incredibly intense pain, such as... Holy shit! How the hell is he still standing after that? 
That's a good question. After a battle with Kuma, a bear man because this is One Piece, Zoro took on not only his own pain from near death, but also Luffy's, despite being told that doing so would surely kill him. But it just didn't. And he doesn't even brag about it. What a badass. Zoro is definitely the stoic badass type, but he can't do everything. He's a sword fighter above all, and prefers to fight up close and personal. He also has the world's shittiest sense of direction. He gets lost without someone there literally reading the map for him, and could never survive on his own without his friends. You might think Zoro would be more of a lone wolf type of guy, but no. Much like how Kuina's death spurred him on to become a great swordsman, it's his friends who keep him fighting. I set sail for only one reason, to meet you. And what is your goal? To beat you. Urza Scarlet grew up in a small rural town called Rosemary Village. It was pretty picturesque, as far as childhoods go. Hold on, Wiz, I'm getting a premonition. Despite everything seeming perfect, something, something terrible happens. A murderous cult attacked, destroyed the city, and enslaved the children to build a tower to resurrect their evil overlord. There it is. Young Urza was tortured, and while she may have lost an eye in the process, she also gained a friend, Jalal Fernandez. He actually gave Urza her last name, Scarlet, after her red hair. She and her buddies swore they'd escape, so Urza ended up staging a revolt and saved the other slaves thanks to discovering her latent magical powers. Unfortunately, not everyone made it out. Turns out Jalal got possessed by some spirit that made him a huge dick, and she had to go without him. Fine, if you want to leave so badly, then I'm not going to stop you, but you'll have to go alone. After that nightmare, Urza swore to dedicate her life to helping and protecting the innocent, and so joined the Fairy Tale Magician's Guild. Luckily for them, she possessed a great skill set for a mage. Her main thing is requip magic, which is basically like having an armory with you at all times, without having to lug it around. Requip magic allows Urza to summon her vast array of weapons and armor at will meaning she can use multiple combinations of swords, lances, and outfits all in one fight without ever really slowing down. Damn, that'd be useful for all my weapons. How many is she packing? She's rumored to have access to as many as 100 sets of armor and 200 weapons. Nice! As far as armor goes, her go-to is the standard heart cruise set. But there's also the Heaven's Wheel armor, where she can send swords flying at people, the spiky defensive adamantine armor, and the black wing and flame empress armors, which have wings for flying. Don't forget her giant armor, which she uses with a lance, purgatory armor, which has a lot of spikes, and uh, seduction armor? I'm not really sure what purpose this serves. Probably to make enemies terribly aroused. Ever tried to fight with an erection whiz? <laughs> Believe me, it's not easy. Right, well Urza claims her most powerful armor is the Armadura Fairy Armor, which is very... pink. These are fancy and all, but sometimes she doesn't even bother suiting up. If her back's against the wall, Urza equips her Clearheart clothing. This enhances her speed and attack over defense, and channels all her magical energy into her katanas for a decisive blow. She can charge magic through her swords to perform all sorts of magical attacks, even mixing and matching weapons and armors to better her chances in a fight. She's also just really good at sword fighting. Actually, she's really good with a lot of weapons, including hand-to-hand. -hand. All of this makes Urza an excellent addition to the Fairy Tale Guild. She quickly became one of its highest ranking mages and was the youngest member to ever pass the S-Class Mage Promotion Test. An incredibly difficult gauntlet only the strongest and wisest of warriors can even attempt. Speaking of achievements, she's pretty friggin' strong. Don't believe me? Well, here she is, lancing a hole through a giant floating cube. This cube was about 100 million cubic miles in volume. To punch through it, Urza's lance must have dealt about 16 kilotons of force. Urza's also fast enough to deflect bullets point blank from a flintlock pistol. Guns with a muzzle velocity of about 540 miles per hour. And that's without a speed boost from her armor. Right, many of her armor sets grant her stat boosts, increasing her speed, magic, defense, etc. She survived plenty of destructive blasts, including one that blew up an island. Considering that island's size, that's an explosion equivalent to two kilotons of TNT. So she's sexy, can survive island-busting attacks, and has a shit ton of weapons? She's basically perfect. Just wish she used a gun or two. 
Well, she may have a vast armory, but swapping them in and out requires magic, and she can run her supply down if she's not careful. So it's just like a mana bar in those fantasy games you always play. Exactly, um, though even when she's out of magic, she's still quite deadly in hand to hand. Like when she fought her alternate self from another parallel universe. That universe has a lot less clothing. Sign me up! But when you're among the best in the guild, you get the job done no matter the limits. I will withstand any physical pain to protect the ones that I love. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle! Oh, sorry, lady. Could you point me in the way of the shipyard? I've been looking around for hours. Aha! You're the one I'm looking for. Come peacefully and you won't be harmed. Sorry, I'm busy. Maybe later. Then we'll have to do this the hard way. I told you, I'm busy! Fine! Well, I guess we're doing this now. You're coming with me! Neat trick. Nothing is worse than the loss of life. Uh, don't start crying, woman. What? So much for all that true strength bullshit, huh? No. I can do this! I will play this bounty for my guilt! For my strength! For my friends! Bring it on! Not the only one who fights for their friends! Ah, <laughs> uh, now... Where the hell is that shipyard? K.O. Jesus! Talk about a killing blow! In the past, Urza could react to projectiles flying over 500 miles per hour, but Zoro could move faster than the eye could see. US Air Force tests have shown that a well-trained human eye can consistently spot and recognize an image in 1 220th of a second. So in this case, Zoro would have had to move from point A to point B, which is about 57 feet, in 4.5 milliseconds. That's close to 9,000 miles per hour. That's more than five times faster than a bullet. Urza didn't really rely on speed anyway, and there's no evidence any of her armor magic could have helped close that wide of a gap. Speaking of her armor, Urza did have more options in defense and weaponry. Unfortunately for her, she was simply outclassed and damage dealt. Urza could withstand hits of about two kilotons, like the blast which destroyed that island, but Zoro has dished out much stronger blows than that. Slicing Pika in half, for example, was equivalent to 11.5 megatons, that's about 6,000 times bigger than anything Urza has survived. And while Urza's artificial eye may have seen through Zoro's Nine Sword style illusion, it couldn't prevent him from actually attacking her. She also had that habit of stripping down to clear heart clothing in a bind. Yeah, it gave her more sword power, but at the cost of less defense. This sounded like a good idea on paper, but close range combat was Zoro's bread and butter. 
Urza was mostly self-taught, and while proficient with a blade, Zoro has trained with swords all his life. Even with the greatest swordsman in the world, an up-close duel was exactly what he was looking for. Guess you won't be getting a fairy tale ending. The winner is Roranoa Zoro. Next time on Death Battle. Hey guys, I'm Chad, I'll play Boomstick. I'm Ben, I play Wiz, and next time, Deadpool is back. Oh, God. <laughs> and we're doing something a little different this time. We're going to be announcing his opponent on the Death Battle cast. Which, if you haven't heard, is a thing. We launched a podcast around Death Battle where we hang out, talk fights, and goof around. It's a lot of fun. Go check it out. Thanks, guys.